Hello everybody, welcome back to game three between Rainer and Parting, played in the Liquid series. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed the first two games. Um, we saw Parting do a, uh, if you haven't seen it, go watch them. Spoiler alert, we saw Parting do a one base forge build in both of them. The first one was a straight forge, um, which did a lot of damage. Uh, and the second one was a gateway first into Forge. Um, the second one didn't work out as well. But let's see what we're getting on this map. Uh, Parting's going for uh, um, a low ground expansion this time, a low ground gateway. So that's what it tells me he's going to build a Nexus. He's going to go for a slightly more uh, normal game. Um, and Rayner, unperturbed by the by being kind of rushed twice, is not drone scouting. He's not 16 pooling, just going for the normal hatch first with the normal Overlord Scout. No fear. This guy's showing some class here. I would certainly be going 16 pool or 14 pool at this point, just saying, all right, you're gonna cannon rush me every game. Especially on this map, like this map is great for a cannon rush, like a proxy robo cannon rush. You can build it all here and then get immortals up in the, the base right here. It's a really, really good map for cannon rush. So surprising that Parting didn't do it. Perhaps that's a, a, a higher level meta play of like, well, this map is common for Cannon Rush, so this is a map where I don't do Cannon Rush because that's what you're expecting, and so on and so on. But yeah, we got the the normal opening, we've got Gateway, Expansion, into Cybercore, into Second Gas will be taken very soon. And uh, we got the normal 17-17 after Hatchery. Um, so yeah, if you guys are enjoying this series, then uh, please like and subscribe. Um, show me some support. I'm trying to build this channel. I'm trying to get some views out there. So please, anything you can do is really appreciated. Um, Okie doke. Very normal game. I'm a little bit taken aback. Uh, we've seen two really spicy games so far. So got to get my head back into the, the mind frame of just, uh, just a normal game. Just with uh, normal units being built at a normal time. Um, and uh, so, what, I mean, this is pre-patch, so the, the range of Queens is the same and uh, the Oracle has is, is not been changed slightly to, to buff Revelation. So what are the common things we're seeing? Roach Ravager, Baneling, um, Hydras, Lurkers, less so, um, but still around. And Muters are, st I think Muters in general are sort of coming back into fashion with Zerg. I think there was a long period there where people just stopped making Muters, particularly after the Heart of the Swarm. Sad times against uh, endless amounts of Widow Mines. Um, but let's see what we got here. We got an overload speed coming in just a little bit later. This is interesting, you know, it's not immediately the first 100 gas, but you know, you get your speed and then um, it just, he, he was mining a little bit more conservatively, I think. Yeah, and, uh, and it comes in just a little bit later, but a great upgrade. Make sure, make sure uh, Overlord's basically unkillable as they're going for a scout. Uh, certainly Overseer's unkillable. Just scouting. See what you can see. Are the roaches? Are there any weird units being produced? And then we see the adept glaives. This is a really flavor of the month build from Botos now. I wonder if we'll see a DT shrine, which is also kind of common. Um, you kind of fake the blink adept, the uh, glaive adepts into a DT shrine. It's a really nice build right now, but um, I don't see the DT shrine coming down. It looks like it's just going to be glaives, but. There's a real question of, of how far you take this. Oh, look at this second. As that overlord gets pushed away, there's another one coming in. It just scouts absolutely everything. And there's a prism coming in. But yeah, there's a real question about how many adepts you make. Do you make just four adepts? Do you make just six adepts and do a light pressure? Or do you build, you know, get, aim to build like 15, 20 adepts over a period of, of time and, and just push consistently and try and end the game? We didn't see a very, we didn't see a probe block. So we didn't send out the probe really early to block in order to make most of the workers be over here. So that kind of tells me that he's not going to go for an all-in adept play. Um, that's my guess. My guess is going to go for kind of a pressure-based adept play, where he's still ultimately transitioning his tech and getting a third base. But the Rage comes down uh, from Reyna. He's seen the, the adepts come across the map, so he's got three, six, eight adepts right now. And will he make any more? That's the question. But let's see how they do. Well, they should shade to the natural. And focusing the queens, there's not actually queen energy here to transfuse. That's a really nice value, just picking up a queen. 
And both the Lings and the Queens are here. Ah, but there's more Lings back here. Okay. More Adepts being warped in. How far does Parting think he can take this? He's building a probe. He's building a forge. So he looks like he's going to transition. Um, another Queen? Another Queen? Another Queen? Just keep getting the Queens, baby. It's, it's worth it. Trade Adepts for Queens all day. But, I mean, he's got to be scared of a counterattack. If he trades his whole armor here, then Zerg just walks across the map and kills him. Oh, and there's a lovely Link counterattack coming right now as we speak. Reyna. Reyna, baby. Brilliant move. Almost guaranteed cancel here on this third. And these depths really can't get much done. There's a beautiful defense so far from Reyna. Just having a, having a force to defend here and a force to defend against the Shade. And the third base cancel. Oof. Yeah, it really does not look good for Protoss. He's he's not got the kind of damage that he wants from investing in such low te low tech units. He just walks in four stalkers. This is cute. This is the kind of innovative, tactical, opportunistic plays that I love from buying. Recognizes this is over. He's like, okay, I'll whoop in four stalkers, kill your overlord, and then I'll just carry this round as like a little overlord assassination squad. Um, as the lings are trying to get in, and they're gonna they're gonna get this stalker, but there's a shield battery wall. But this is just annoying for Protoss. Protoss has to warp him back here, so prevents any kind of aggro. But the the adepts and the sentries unite, and the third base is going to come down. But going to come down much delayed, um, as the lair is started, and more roaches, ravages being produced, and Reyna's going to move up now to three base saturation. Look at it! Look at it! Look at it! A little four stalker squad with some. With an observer, just killing creep, killing overlords, killing whatever he can. Really nice play. Just, 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 it's available to him. I don't know if he planned this. It's probably not in his build, but just the opportunity arose and he's using it to great effect. He's producing immortals at home, he's getting his blink. All looks pretty standard, pretty, pretty standard. So I'm interested to know what's going to be Rainer's second tech. He's got roaches, ravages, and lings, but what's going to be the next thing? Hydras? Uh, spire, infestation pit, bailing nest, uh, lurkers. What? That's going to be the interesting question here. As we see the robotics bay come down from parting, probably going to be his his standard fare of three colossus immortals. Sorry, not immortals, sentries and stalkers, and some adepts because of the way uh, this game is played out. But building a, a shield battery and a cannon at home kind of tells me that Pine's probably looking to move out here and get aggressive. And as we see the Baneling Nest coming down for, for Rainer. So he's going for a Baneling Ling Roach composition, which is so very meta and very powerful at the moment. Um, why are we playing? Can you hear the music? It's Terran music, right? Confirm. Confirm slash so deny in the chat. That's Terran music, right? In a PVZ. I don't know how this is decided, but, you know. The Terran music's the best music, so I'm not complaining. Okay, and the Ling's come in for the counterattack, just as parting expected. But he's got the beautiful defense there. Two cannons and a shield battery. And oh, quickly, force fields away. The queens. These queens are isolated and get picked off really swiftly. Yep. Love it. Love it. More. More shaving. Shave. Keep shaving. Just, just more force fields. You know, the, the, the bios have a cooldown. And they take time. If you just have a million force fields, just apparently ravagers do nothing. But parting feels like he's had enough. He's used enough force fields. He sees there's quite an army. He's a spine crawler. He thinks, nah, this is overstay. This is unlikely to produce results. Let's get back. We've already picked up a bunch of queens, which is very much worthwhile. And the Lings try and come across for a counterattack, seeing that the pressure's released, but Parting has sent his units on the perfect path. And um, defending this space is always really important in this matchup, and I'll be interested to see how Parting's going to do it. I saw, I can't remember who it was now, but as the Adepts come in here, is the War Prison still alive? Yep. Can he pick it up though? This spore is very well placed. Gets one adept. And yeah, that's really not great. But also saying, yeah, I can't remember who it was, but you know, some amount of cannons and shield batteries here ultimately is going to be really useful. I think it was Hastum. Um so yeah, Colossus is the order of the day. Colossus on Colossus as he takes a fourth base. And uh Can he prevent the cancel? Oh, doesn't cancel it, in fact, so that's just money lost from parting. That's a real shame. Um, very opportunistic by by Rayner. Good focus there. 
um, as he takes his uh, fifth base, three, four, five, five. Yep. And we see a spire coming down. It's very similar build, you know. We've seen all the games from 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 Rayner. Going for Roach Ling early into kind of a, a later Bane Ling, with a later speed, and then into Spire to round it out. And then usually following the Spire with an Infestation Pit coming up fairly soon, just to get that Hive and get your t your three three upgrades. So the Spire is going to insulate you against a lot of things. And it's also going to give you that muter muter switch potential, which can be really devastating against Protoss if used correctly. Oh, these pro these these stalkers kind of out on the map, and they could get surrounded, but. No, Rainer's just going for a two-pronged attack here. Yeah, and here comes the this pathway. This pathway is very abusable by Hydras, Roaches, Ravagers. But Parting's got his, position, his army in position. Oh, there was a cancel over here. The fourth base cancelled again. Rainer's so happy. He just sends everything home, really delaying the expansion of, that part of the Protoss, really delaying their ability to develop into the late game. And yeah, that's a really huge pickup. Parting does not want to be rebuilding this you know this is the third time he's trying to build this this base blink forward just trying to get as much value as possible what prism oh gets out nice <laughs> saw it at the last second um as this blink stalkers come in here taking back the creep and we're settling into yeah a pretty dynamic game here a pretty, uh, big late game i don't think rainer can kill him Ooh, has to recall these stalkers that got caught out. Blink. Yeah, okay. But that's fine. He can recall. Recall's in a, a legitimate ability. He really wants to transfer these workers. Look at 16 out of 8. He really wants to send them over here, but this base just won't stay up. Did you just put a fifth down? Just go for both these bases. One of them will live. And Python picks up the Colossus in the warp prism. Just to make it get there quicker. The Ling is looking for a surround. They're probably just going to go and cancel this base again. Which will be incredibly frustrating. Can, oh, can he catch these Lings? This will be great. If Brighton can surround and catch these Lings and not let them escape. Send some mummy here. No. Then that would be just a great pickup. Okay, he's created a little defensive squad. Nope, they're coming with the main army. But Brighton's maxed out. He's got 2-1 versus 2-2. Two, two. Alright, that's not good. But, you know, Rain is also maxed out, and he's got Baneling, so it's all going to come down to the force fields. And he's got a lot of sentries. He's got a lot of sentries, so it's all going to come down to the force fields. Rain with a big spread coming in from the top side as well with more Banelings. Parting. What's he going to do? The force fields are great so far. Let's get rid of this. Oh, even protected from the top side, and then he blinks to the bottom side. Creating a full wall of force fields. Do you keep pushing his parting? That's my question. Surely you need to. You need to get some kind of damage here. You can't just let the let this game continue as it has been. Ooh, huge biles there. Rainer's just saying, alright, have your force fields. I'm just going to bow your army. <laughs> and I like that response. It's good. This base is lost. Probably got a lot of economic damage done on this base. He's got a few corruptors in here to try and deal with the Colossus. I'm really not sure if that's the best thing. I think maybe... Uh, Zergs need to be rushing Hive and then some like Vipers and you can just abduct these Colossus. Maybe that's the right thing. But here we go, Baneling flank from behind. Oh, some Banelings get in there and more Banelings in from the front. Oh my god, it's a huge, huge Baneling hit. And Python loses all his Colossus. He's just got, basically just got Blink Stalkers now. These Immortals are about to go down. So this is just pure gateway units against Zerg units, and that just does not feel good. And Parton has to get out. Perhaps a little bit of an overstay. He got one base, but this base is up. Ideally, if he could see the entire map, he would have gone here, retreated back to here, but he can't see the whole map. Tried to end it right there and there, and it's there and then, and uh, ultimately lost a lot of tech as a result. Blinks back inside the safety of his base, but now Protoss is reset. He's got no complexity to his army. He's just got a stack of Blink Stalkers. And against Banelings, ooh, ooh, it gets really, really nasty really, really quickly. And we could see Raynor close this out with some, with a big Baneling Roachling attack. Yeah, I don't feel good for my boy Parting here. He's only got sentries, and not even many of them. That's all the sentries force fields used. They're all immediately deleted. And here comes the Baneling Ravager army to end them all. Not even great micro from 
Reina. Ah, oh, look at this. Send some of them off just to make sure that he gets some worker kills. 25 worker kills. And he's already done enough damage to warrant this, you know. So he can move home now. He's killed 26 workers. Basically eliminated a base. He's got ultras on the way. Whoa. Four ultras. I guess, you know, he is going melee upgrades, so it makes sense to build ultras. But really do not often see ultras in PvZ. Uh, because they're just too kiteable, and a lot of uh, Protoss units do extra damage versus armored. But he's got Infestors as well. He's going Infestor, Ultra, Ling, Bane, Roach in PvZ. Take notes, everyone. Take notes. I love building Ultras. They're, they are really fun to play with, but they tend to be n not very good value, especially if your, your objective is to try and attack and end the game. Uh, they can be quite clunky, but let's see. Reyna certainly knows what he's doing. He's a consummate pro. So let's see how this is going to work out for him. Um, they are pretty good against Colossus. Uh, as they they, they take very little damage from Colossus. Oh, sorry. Just hit the wrong button. Uh, Reyna even taking this base at this point. He's just so... You know, he has so much map control. Parting just has no ability to leave his base. He has to stay right here. And he's just building Colossus. More Colossus. You know, he's trying to build an army that he wanted... 10 minutes like five six minutes ago just to just to be safe really probably you need carriers you need a more complex late game army here at this point but yeah rain and not just headbutting not just trying to attack over and over and over again just to close the game out He's just holding the position a couple of fungal growths just to lock everything in place whilst the ultras come in oh my days I'm speechless, guys. So the Ultras did really well, just tanking damage. Just just, just tanking. And then the Baneleys came in from behind. And they did a lot, 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 a lot of damage. Yeah, the Ultras were just basically meat shields. They had a lot of armor and a lot of her health bar. And that just allowed the Ling Baneling Roach to get in and be effective. Yeah, I mean... Parting is really, really just uh, holding on with both, with both, uh, try, you know, both, uh, what's the word? <laughs> Mechanical arms at this point. Um, I really don't know what he can do. I guess he's building Immortals right now to deal with the Ultras, but I feel like, hmm, I want to say like Stargate, but you've got no upgrades on the Stargate. You know, the scene Corruptors, you know, there's a Spire. Uh, doesn't seem great. Is this, is this plus three attack for air wow Reyna just really covering his bases like you know if there is going to be a Stargate transition from the Protoss he is ready for it he's going to be right clicking deleting those as he loses the base right clicking the uh, the crack carries down yeah I mean what's the hope for parting the hope, the hope is to be able to build up an army that can actually contest this but to some extent it kind of seems like a bit of desperation at this point and yeah, I think Parton's coming to just, just close it out. He's saying, all right, let's go. If this doesn't work, I'm going to leave the game. And as he gets completely surrounded by Banelings, you got to imagine GG's coming in. There we go. Rainer takes it two to one. Hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. Thanks.